Chapter 1 The Living World How wonderful is the living world The wide range of living types is amazing The extraordinary habitats in which we find living organism be it cold mountains deciduous forest oceans fresh water lakes deserts or hot springs leave us speechless The beauty of a galloping horse of the migrating birds the valley of flowers or the attacking shark evokes awe and a deep sense of wonder the ecological conflict and the cooperation among members of a population and among population of a community or even the molecular traffic inside a cell make us dif- deeply reflect on what indeed is life this question has two implicit questions within it The first is a technical one and seeks answer to what living is as opposed to non-living. And the second is a philosophical one and seeks answer to what the purpose of life is. As scientist, we shall not attempt answering the second question. We will try to reflect on what is living. What is living? When we try to define living we conventionally look for distinctive characteristics exhibited by living organisms growth reproduction ability to sense environment and mount a suitable response come to our mind immediately as unique features of living organism one can add a few more features like metabolism ability to self replicate self organize interact and emergence to this list let us try to understand each of this all living organisms grow increase in mass and increase in number of individuals are twin characteristics of growth a multicellular organism grow by cell division in plants this growth by cell division occur continuously throughout their lifespan In animals this growth is seen only up to a certain age however cell division occurs in certain tissue to replace lost cells unicellular organisms grow by cell division one can easily observe this in vitro cultures by simply counting the number of cells under the microscope in majority of higher animals and plants growth and reproduction are mutually exclusive events one must remember that increase in body mass is considered as growth non living objects also grow if we take increase in body mass as criterion for growth mountains boulders and sand mounds do grow However, this kind of growth exhibited by non-living object is by accumulation of material on the surface. In living organisms, growth is from inside. Growth therefore cannot be taken as a defining property of living organisms. Conditions under which it can be observed in all living organisms have to be explained and then we understand that it is a characteristic of living system a dead organism does not grow reproduction likewise is a characteristic of living organism in multicellular organism reproduction refers to the production of progeny possessing features more or less similar to those of parents invariably and implicitly we refer to sexual reproduction organism reproduce by asexual means also fungi multiply and spread easily due to millions of asexual spores they produce in lower organisms like eastern hydra we observe budding in planaria flatworms we observe true regeneration that is a fragmented organism regenerates the lost part of its body and becomes a new organism the fungi the filamentous algae the protonema of mosses all easily multiply by fragmentation when it comes to unicellular organisms like bacteria unicellular algae or amoeba reproduction is synonymous with growth that is increase in number of cells we have already defined growth as equivalent to increase in cell number or mass hence 
we notice that in single celled organisms we are not very clear about the usage of these two terms growth and reproduction further there are many organism which do not reproduce mules sterile worker bees infertile human couples etc hence reproduction also cannot be an all inclusive defining characteristic of living organisms of course no non living object is capable of reproducing or replicating by itself another characteristic of life is metabolism all living organisms are made of chemicals these chemicals small and big belonging to various classes sizes functions etc are constantly being made and changed into some other biomolecules these convergences are chemical reactions or metabolic reaction there are thousands of metabolic reactions occurring simultaneously inside all living organisms be they unicellular or multicellular all plants animals fungi and microbes exhibit metabolism the sum total of all the chemical reaction occurring in our body is metabolism no non living object exhibit metabolism metabolic reactions can be demonstrated outside the body in a cell free system an isolated metabolic reaction outside the body of an organism performed in a test tube is neither living nor non living hence while metabolism is a defining feature of all living organisms without exception isolated metabolic reaction in vitro are not living things but surely living reactions hence cellular organization of the body is the defining feature of the life forms perhaps the most obvious and technically complicated feature of all living organism is this ability to sense their surroundings or environment and respond to these environmental stimuli which could be physical chemical or biological we sense our environment through our sense organs plants respond to external factors like light water temperature other organisms pollutants etc all organisms from the prokaryotes to the most complex eukaryotes can sense and respond to the environmental cues photoperiod affects reproduction in seasonal breeders both plants and animals all organisms handle chemicals entering their bodies all organisms therefore are aware of their surroundings human being is the only organism who is aware of himself that is has self consciousness consciousness therefore becomes the defining property of living organisms when it comes to human beings it is all the more difficult to define the living state we observe patients lying in coma in hospital virtually supported by machine which replace heart and lungs the patient is otherwise brain dead the patient has no self consciousness are such patients who never come back to normal life living or non living in higher classes you will come to know that all living phenomena are due to underlying interactions properties of tissues are not present in the constituent cell but arise as a result of interactions among the constituent cells similarly properties of cellular organelles are not present in the molecular constituent of the organelle but arise as a result of interactions among the molecular components comprising the organelle these interactions result in emergent properties at a higher level of organization this phenomenon is true in the hierarchy of organizational complexity at all levels therefore we can say that living organisms are self replicating evolving and self regulating interactive systems capable of responding to external stimuli biology is the story of life on earth biology is the story of evolution of living organisms on earth 
all living organism present past and future are linked to one another by the sharing of common genetic material but to varying degrees diversity in the living world if you look around you will see a large variety of living organisms be it potted plants insects birds your pets or other animals and plants there are also several organisms that you cannot see with your naked eye but they are all around you if you were to increase the area that you make observations in the range and variety of organism that you see would increase obviously if you were to visit a dense forest you would probably see a much greater number and kinds of living organisms in it each different kind of plant animal or organism that you see represents a species the number of species that are known and described range between 1.7 to 1.8 million this refers to biodiversity or the number and the type of organisms present on earth we should remember here that as we explore new areas and even old ones new organisms are continuously being identified as stated earlier there are millions of plants and animals in the world we know the plants and animals in our own area by the local names these local names would vary from place to place even within a country probably you would recognize the confusion that would be created if we did not find ways and means to talk to each other to refer to organisms we are talking about hence there is a need to standardize the naming of living organisms such that a particular organism is known by the same name all over the world this process is called nomenclature obviously nomenclature or naming is only possible when the organism is described correctly and we know to what organism the name is attached to this is identification in order to facilitate the study number of scientists have established procedures to assign a scientific name to each known organisms this is acceptable to biologists all over the world for plants scientific names are based on agreed principles and criteria which are provided in international code for botanical nomenclature you may ask how are animals named animal taxonomist have evolved international code of zoological nomenclature the scientific names ensure that each organism has only one name description of any organism should enable the people in any part of the world to arrive at the same name they also ensure that such a name has not been used for any other organism that is known biologists follow universally accepted principles to provide scientific names to known organism each name has two components the generic name and the specific epithet This system of providing a name with two components is called binomial nomenclature. This naming system was given by Carlos Linnaeus is being practiced by biologists all over the world. This naming system using a two word format was found convenient. Let us take the example of mango to understand the way of providing scientific names better. The scientific name of mango is written as Mangifera indica. Let us see how it is a binomial name. In this name, Mangifera represents the genus, while indica is a particular species or a specific epithet. Other universal rules of nomenclature are as follows. Biological names are generally in Latin and written in italics. they are latinized or derived from latin irrespective of their origin the first word in a biological name represents the genus while the second component denotes the specific epithet both the words in a biological name when handwritten are separately underlined or printed in italics to indicate their latin origin the first word denoting the genus starts with a capital letter while the specific epithet starts with a small letter it can be illustrated with the example of mangifera indica name of the author appears after the specific epithet 
that is at the end of the biological name and is written in an abbreviated form example mangifera indica linn it indicates that this species was first described by linnaeus since it is nearly impossible to study all the living organism it is necessary to devise some means to make this possible this process is called classification classification is the process by which anything is grouped into convenient categories based on some easily observable characters for example we easily recognize groups such as plants or animals or dogs cats or insects the moment we use any of these terms we associate certain characters with the organisms in that group what image do you see when you think of a dog obviously each one of us will see dogs and not cats now if we were to think of alsatians we know what we are talking about similarly suppose we were to say mammals you would of course think of mammals with external ears and body hair likewise in plants if we try to talk of wheat the picture in each of our minds will be of wheat plant and not of rice or any other plant hence all these dogs cats mammals wheat rice plants animals etc are convenient categories we use to study organisms the scientific term for these categories is taxa here you must recognize that taxa can indicate categories at various different levels plants also form a taxa wheat is also a taxa similarly animals mammals dog are all taxa but you know that dog is a mammal and mammals are animals therefore animals mammals and dogs represent taxa at different levels hence based on characteristics all living organisms can be classified into different taxa this process of classification is called taxonomy external and internal structure along with the structure of the cell development process and ecological information of organisms are essential and form the basis of modern taxonomic studies hence characterization identification classification and nomenclature are the processes that are basic to taxonomy taxonomy is not something new human beings have always been interested in knowing more and more about the various kind of organisms particularly with reference to their own use in early days human beings needed to find sources for their basic needs of food clothing and shelter hence the earliest classification were based on the uses of various organisms human beings were since long not only interested in knowing more about different kinds of organism and their diversity but also the relationships among them this branch of study was referred to as systematics the word systematics is derived from the latin word systema which means systematic arrangement of organisms linnaeus used systema naturae as the title of his publication the scope of systematics was later enlarged to include identification nomenclature and classification systematics take into account evolutionary relationship between organisms taxonomic categories classification is a not a single step process but involves hierarchy of steps in which each step represents a rank or category Since the category is part of overall taxonomic arrangement it is called the taxonomic category and all categories together constitute the taxonomic hierarchy each category referred to as unit of classification in fact represents a rank and is commonly termed as taxon taxonomic categories and hierarchy can be illustrated by an example insects represents a group of organisms sharing common features like three pairs of jointed legs it means insects are recognizable concrete object which can be classified and thus were given a rank or category can you name other such groups of organisms remember group represent category 
category further denotes rank each rank or taxon in fact represents a unit of classification these taxonomic groups categories are distinct biological entities and not merely morphological aggregates taxonomical studies of all known organisms have led to the development of common categories such as kingdom phylum or division for plants class order family genus and species all organisms including those in the plant and animal cells have species as the lowest category now the question you may ask is how to place an organism in various categories the basic requirement is the knowledge of character of an individual or group of organisms this helps in identifying the similarities and dissimilarities among the individual of the same kind of organism as well as other kind of organisms species taxonomic studies consider a group of individual organism with fundamental similarities as a species one should be able to distinguish one species from the other closely related species based on the distinct morphological differences let us consider mangifera indica solanum tuberosum potato and panthera leo lion all the three names indica tuberosum and leo represent the specific epithets while the first words mangifera solanum and panthera are the genera and represents another higher level of taxon or category each genus may have one or more than one specific epithet representing different organisms but having morphological similarities for example panthera has another specific epithet called tigris and solanum includes species like nigrum and melongena human beings belong to the species sapiens which is grouped as the genus homo the scientific name thus for human being is written as homo sapiens genus genus comprises a group of related species which has more characters in common in comparison to species of other genera we can say that genera are aggregates of closely related species for example potato and brinjal are two different species but both belong to the genus solanum lion panthera leo leopard panthera pardus and tiger panthera tigris with several common features are all species of the genus panthera this genus differs from other genus felis which includes cat family the next category family has a group of related genera with still less number of similarities as compared to the genus and species families are characterized on the basis of both vegetative and reproductive features of the plant species among plants For example three different genera solanum petunia and datura are placed in the family solanaceae among animals for example genus panthera comprising lion tiger leopard is put along with genus felis that is cats in the family felidae similarly if you observe the features of a cat and a dog you will find some similarities and some differences as well they are separated into two different families feridae and canidae respectively order you have seen earlier that categories like species genus and family are based on number of taxonomical categories are identified based on aggregates of characters order being a higher category is the assemblage of families which exhibit a few similar characters the similar characters are less in number as compared to different genera included in a family plant families like convolaceae solanaceae are included in order polymonials mainly based on the floral characters the animal order carnivora includes family like felidae and canidae class 
This category includes related orders. For example, order Primata comprising monkey, gorilla and gibbon is placed in the class Mammalia along with the order Carnivora that includes animals like tiger, cat and dog. Class Mammalia has other orders also. Phylum Classes comprising animals like fishes, amphibians, reptiles, birds along with mammals constitute the next higher category called the phylum. All these based on the common features like presence of notochord and dorsal hollow neural system are included in the phylum chordata. In case of plants, classes with a few similar characters are assigned to a higher category called division. Kingdom all animals belonging to various phyla are assigned to the highest category called kingdom. Animalia in the classification system of animals. The kingdom plantae on the other hand is distinct and comprises all plants from various division. Henceforth, we will refer to these two groups as animal and plant kingdoms. The taxonomic categories from species to kingdom have been shown in ascending order starting from the species in figure 1.1. These are broad categories. However, taxonomists have also developed subcategories in this hierarchy to facilitate more sound and scientific placement of various taxa. Look at hierarchy in the figure 1.1. Can you recall the basis of arrangement? Say for example, as we go higher from species to kingdom, the number of common characteristics goes on decreasing. Lower the taxa, more are the characteristics that the members within the taxon share. Higher the category, greater is the difficulty of determining the relationship to the other taxa at the same level. Hence, the problem of classification becomes more complex. Table 1.1 indicates the taxonomic categories to which common organisms like housefly, mango and wheat belong. Table 1.1 Organisms with their taxonomic categories Common name Man Biological name Homo sapiens Genus Homo Family Homonidae Order Primata Class Mammalia Phylum Chordata Common name Housefly Biological name Musca domestica Genus Musca Family Muscidae Order Diptera Class Insecta Phylum Arthropoda Mango Mangifera indica Genus Mangifera Family Anacardiaceae Order Sapiendals Class Dicotyledonae, Division, Angiosperme. Common name, Wheat. Biological name, Triticum astivum. Genus, Triticum. Family, Poaceae. Order, Poels. Class, Monocotyledonae. Phylum, Angiosperme. Taxonomical aids. Taxonomic studies of various species of plants, animals and other organisms are useful in agriculture, forestry, industry and in general in knowing our bioresources and their diversity. These studies would require correct classification and identification of organisms. Identification of organisms require intensive laboratory and field studies. The collection of actual specimens of plants and animal species is essential and is the prime source of taxonomic studies. These are also fundamental to studies and essential for training in systematics. It is used for classification of an organism and the information gathered is also stored along with the specimens. In some cases, the specimen is preserved for future studies. Biologists have established certain procedures and techniques to store and preserve the information as well as the specimens. Some of these are explained to help you understand the usage of these aids. Herbarium Herbarium is a storehouse of collected plant specimens that are, that are dried, 
pressed and preserved on the sheets further these sheets are arranged according to a universally accepted system of classification these specimens along with their description on the herbarium sheets become a storehouse or repository for future use the herbarium sheet also carry a label providing information about date and place of collection english local and botanical names family collector's name etc herbaria also serve as quick referral systems in the taxonomical studies botanical gardens these specialized gardens have collection of living plants for reference plant species in these gardens are grown for identification purposes and each plant is labeled indicating its botanical scientific name and its family the famous botanical gardens are at q england indian botanical garden howra india and at national botanical research institute lucknow india museum biological museums are generally set up in the educational institutes such as schools and colleges museums have collection of preserved plant and animal specimen for study and reference specimens are preserved in the containers or jars in preservative solutions plant and animal specimens may also be preserved as dry specimens insects are preserved in insect boxes after collecting killing and pinning larger animals like birds and mammals are usually stuffed and preserved museums often have collection of skeletons of animals too zoological parks these are the places where wild animals are kept in protected environments under human care and which enable us to learn about their food habits and behavior all animals in a zoo are provided as far as possible the conditions similar to their natural habitats children love visiting these parks commonly called zoos key key is another taxonomical aid used for identification of plants and animal based on the similarities and dissimilarities the key are based on contrasting characters generally in a pair called couplet it represents the choice made between two opposite options this results in acceptance of only one and rejection of the other each statement in the key is called a lead Separate taxonomic keys are required for each taxonomic category such as family, genus and species for identification purposes. Keys are generally analytical in nature. Flora, manuals, monographs and catalogs are some other means of recording descriptions. They also help in correct identification. Flora contains the actual account of habitat and distribution of plants of a given area. These provide the index to the plant species found in a particular area. Manuals are useful in providing information for identification of names of species found in an area. Monographs contain information of any one taxon. Summary The living world is rich in variety. Millions of plants and animals have been identified and described, but a large number still remains unknown. The very range of organism in terms of size, color, habitat, physiological and morphological features make us seek the defining characteristic of living organisms. In order to facilitate the study of kinds and diversity of organisms biologists have evolved certain rules and principles for identification nomenclature and classification of organisms the branch of knowledge dealing with these aspects is referred to as taxonomy the taxonomic studies of various species of plants and animals are useful in agriculture forestry industry and in general for knowing our bioresources and their diversity the basics of taxonomy like identification naming and classification of organisms are universally evolved under international codes
based on the resemblances and distinct differences each organism is identified and assigned a correct scientific biological name comprising two words as per the binomial system of the nomenclature an organism represents or occupies a place or position in the system of classification there are many categories or ranks and are generally referred to as taxonomic categories or taxa all the categories constitute a taxonomic hierarchy taxonomists have developed a variety of taxonomic aids to facilitate identification naming and classification of organism these studies are carried out from the actual specimens which are collected from the field and preserved as referrals in the form of herbaria museums and in botanical gardens and zoological parks it requires special techniques for collection and preservation of specimens in herbaria and museums live specimens on the other hand of the plants and animals are found in botanical gardens or in zoological parks taxonomists also prepare and disseminate information through manuals and monographs for further taxonomic studies taxonomic keys are tools that help in identification based on characteristics i hope you enjoyed the video thank you